Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well, so please check the link in the description for more details. My name is Sava, and today we're going to diversify our portfolio the most we can. And to help us, we will investigate the diversification ratio, a key concept in portfolio management. And this will allow us to form the most diversified portfolio possible across a range of assets, or as we have got in our example, broad asset classes. And we have got six major asset classes represented by total return indices of relevant ETFs, that is large stocks, small stocks, treasury bonds, high yield corporate bonds, gold, as in physical gold, and real estate investment trusts. And we have got daily data on those starting at the end of March 2016 and ending March end 2021, so for a five year period. And first, before we go on with any further analysis, we got to calculate daily total returns of those asset classes by applying the usual formula. Total return index today divided by the total return index yesterday minus one. And we can drag it across all six asset classes in question and enforce it throughout the whole sample period. And first, we can look at annualized volatilities, as annualized risk of those asset classes. To do that, we can enforce the sample standard deviation formula, enforce it for our column of returns, and multiply by the square root of 252 as we want to annualize it, and there are typically 252 trading days in a full year. We can enforce this formula and get the annualized volatility of large stocks at roughly 19% and we can drag it across to get annualized volatilities for all six asset classes, and we can see nothing surprising here. The risk of small stocks is quite a bit higher than the risk of large stocks. The risk of bonds and bond-related asset classes is quite a bit low and comparable to the risk of investment in gold, and real estate investment trusts are quite risky and comparable to the risk of small stocks. Not surprising so far. And uh, right now, we can discuss the concept of the diversification ratio and what it actually seeks to achieve. As we all know, the magic of diversification and the whole purpose of it is to enjoy the weighted average return across your assets or asset classes while exposing yourself to less than the weighted average risk due to the fact that assets and asset classes are not perfectly correlated with each other. So the diversification ratio seeks to maximize the ratio between the hypothetical weighted average volatility across asset classes, so what would have happened if our assets were perfectly correlated, and the actual volatility of a portfolio formed as some combination of these assets in some proportion. And the higher it is, the more diversification benefits we reap by allocating our capital that way. And this can lead to um, interesting implications for portfolio management, and allow you to form a diversified portfolio that reaps the diversification benefits the most you can possibly achieve with this mixture of assets. However, to calculate the risk of any portfolio that we will consider, we first need to calculate the covariance matrix between the returns of our asset classes with each other. And uh, to do it efficiently and using a flexible formula, we can use the combination of a covariance function and the index function. So we can apply the covariance dot as function, sample covariance, and apply the index function. And first, we'll just select the first row of our return matrix over here. And again, we need just to lock both columns and rows in this selection and refer to the column indicator over here that is uh, denoted in cell R2. And we lock the row here. And then we go all the way down to the final row of our arrays of returns. So referring to that particular row, again, locking both columns and rows. And then to specify the second return array that we need for our covariance matrix, we can copy that across and just edit this particular cell reference and change it to the row identificator that is referred to in cell P4. And we lock the columns over here. 
And then this will calculate the daily covariance, but as we want annualized risk and annualized covariance, we can just multiply by 252 as covariance scales linearly. And there are 252 trading days in a year again. So we can enforce this formula and just drag it across the whole covariance matrix and get in the diagonal the variances of our individual asset classes and in non-diagonal cells we would have covariances of pairs of your asset classes. And what it allows us to do is to calculate the risk of any portfolio of any weights that allocates your capital towards these six asset classes using this simple matrix multiplication formula. So let's start with an equally weighted portfolio across these six asset classes. So just referring to one sixth throughout and check that the sum of weights is indeed equal to 100% as we, as we need to allocate all of our capital and we cannot leverage ourselves or find spare money elsewhere. And now we can calculate portfolio risk using a simple matrix multiplication formula. So we do a mult matrix multiplication. First input the row vector of our weight, and then we multiply it on the right by another matrix multiplication result that multiplies the annualized covariance matrix onto the transposed, so a column vector of weights over here. And that calculation would give us the portfolio variance. And uh, to calculate the standard deviation, the portfolio volatility, we can just take the square root. And we can enforce this matrix multiplication formula using shift control enter. And we get portfolio risk of 11.13%. And to understand how diversified such a portfolio is, we can calculate the hypothetical weighted standard deviation that we would have been exposed to if all asset classes were perfectly correlated with each other. To calculate that, we can just use the sum product function and refer to our weight array and our standard deviation array. And we can see that our weighted standard deviation is quite a bit larger than the actual portfolio risk, and the diversification ratio can be calculated as the ratio between our weighted standard deviation, the hypothetical, and the actual portfolio risk that is lower due to diversification gains we are enjoying by allocating our capital across multiple asset classes. And we can see that our diversification ratio is around 1.5, but can we actually do better? Can we optimize it by changing our portfolio weights to reap the most diversification benefits that are possible given our investable universe, our six asset classes? However, before we start optimizing our diversification ratio to reap the most benefits we can possibly achieve in that investable universe again, uh, I can show you some intuitive uh, cases. For example, if we allocate 100% of our capital towards one asset class and zero towards all others, our diversification ratio would quite intuitively be one because we are not achieving any diversification at all. So the higher this ratio is, the more diversification the portfolio enjoys. So we can quite easily maximize it using Excel Solver to get an optimal, in that sense, portfolio that can be used later on to inform your asset allocation decisions. So we can go into Solver and specify our optimization task. So we want to maximize our diversification ratio reported in cell R18. We do want to maximize it, so no need to change anything over here. And we want to change the variable cells that correspond to asset weights, which are cells R13 all the way to W13. And our constraints are quite simple. First of all, we need to add the constraint that the sum of weights should be equal to one. We need to allocate all of our capital and we cannot leverage. So that uh, restriction is quite intuitive. And we also need to add a restriction that our weights need to be non-negative. So greater or equal to zero because we are not, uh, we do not want to short sell in this particular example. However, you can remove this restriction if your portfolio management uh, philosophy does allow you to short sell or whether it's available uh, to you uh, in your trading platform, for example. And we can untick this box as we have imposed all the restrictions we need over here. And we can stick with the gradient descent algorithm, GRG nonlinear, and we click solve and the algorithm quite quickly converges to the optimal value. Uh, the diversification ratio in the optimal case, the highest that we can achieve is 1.89 and uh, our portfolio weights have changed quite a bit from the equal weighted case. We do invest quite a lot in treasury bonds, almost half of our capital, and uh, we invest nothing into real estate investment trusts. 
simply because they are quite risky and they're quite tightly correlated with uh, stock markets. So there was no sense in investing uh, anything at all into real estate investment trusts. However, we do invest quite a bit into both large stocks and small stocks. And that allows us to achieve a risk of 8.28%, which is quite a bit lower than the risk of 11% uh, enjoyed by the equally weighted portfolio. But most importantly, in this case, we reap the most diversification benefits humanly possible in this investable universe. And that's all there is for diversification ratio and uh, the use of it to motivate your asset allocation. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics topics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much and stay tuned.